So hello, my name's Adrian Richards, I'm a plastic and cosmetic surgeon and I'm the surgical director of Aurora Clinics based here in the UK. And today I'm going to be talking about scarring and the different types of abnormal scarring. There's really quite a lot of confusion about um, types of scarring. People sort of saying they've got keloid scars for instance when they, when they probably haven't. Okay, so first thing is any cut, any surgical cut, any injury is going to provide, going to make scarring. Okay. So, if it's a very superficial burn, first degree burn, like a sunburn, only affects the uh, upper part of the uh, skin, upper epidermis, doesn't affect the lower dermis, so it's not going to, so that area of skin is going to be changed, you haven't damaged the lower, deeper layers of the skin, so you won't get any scarring. Okay. But if we get into second, third degree burns, which are basically deeper, deeper into the dermis, you're going to get some scarring because it's the deep layers, when the deep layers are affected, that's when you get scarring. So any surgical cut goes through the whole layers of the skin, including the deep dermis, so you will have a scar. Okay? So there is no invisible healing. You will always be able to, if you really look, see a scar. Um, and certainly, if, uh, if you take it under the microscope, you'll be able to see that the skin is different in the scarred area. Okay? So, as plastic surgeons, what we try and do is hide the scars in concealed areas. So, you know, in a line, you know, we try and hide it in a line down here for a facelift in a natural fold in front of the ear. So we can hide scars in areas where we know they're going to be uh, well um, uh, healed, you know, healed and concealed. Okay. So, particularly on the face, um, with older people and more naturally lined thinner skin, it's easier to hide the scars. Also, old pe older people tend not to have such a sort of vital, florid scar reaction. So a young person with a scar will tend to have a much more aggressive scarring response than an older person. So almost, you know, a good thing about getting old, if there is a good thing about getting old, is if you have a scar on the face, it will heal better than be more concealed. So an average scar on the face in an old person will tend to be slightly white, and a fine line. And the reason it's white is because you don't have the same pigmentation in the scar. So the melanocytes, which are the um, little cells which make um, um, skin pigment, um, there aren't so many in the scar. So that's why scars tend to be pale when they've matured. So if you um, go in the sun, uh, often uh, if you get a suntan, the scar won't suntan, so it will stay white. And some people with slightly darker skin, conversely, the scar can get darker. Um, but pigment changes are very common in the scars. So, getting back to what we can do about scars, we can try and hide them in natural creases. Anywhere on the body, we try and uh, uh, put the scars in the natural lines of the body. And these are called Langer's lines. This was a scientist um, many years ago who's actually devised a model for plastic surgeons showing exactly where the scar should be orientated. Should they be that way, that way, that way, that way? Yeah? So Langer's lines, we tend to go along Langer's lines, and there's lots of different ways of assessing uh, which way to go. As a general rule, if you can see lines on the skin going in a particular way, that's where you want to go. If the hair is growing in a long particular way, it slants across a particular way, that's the way to go. And if you pinch the skin, you can see which way it should go. If, it, if, you're, if you pinch your skin and your, your fingers tend to go sideways, that's not the way. If you pinch it and they tend to go together, that's the way. So you look for natural lines, Langer's lines, which plastic surgeons know, um, the direction of that skin hair. Um, these are all sort of uh, areas uh, which help us orientate the scar in the right way. The next thing we do to try and uh, make the scarring as best as possible is to close the incision with the least possible tension. Okay, so it's tension across scars. So if the body's trying to pull the scar apart, yeah, yeah, and you sew it together, the body's pulling it apart. The body will tend to tend to make a very aggressive scar. Okay, so tension's pulling it apart. How does the body react? It reacts to heap up more scar tissue. So anywhere where there's tension across the scar. And the classic area is in the chest area here. The skin's very taut here. So if you try and tie the skin together, if there's tension on it, 
tends to get lumpy, whereas you know, in the face there's not so much tension, particularly on me, you know, this area much less tension, here there's more tension. So the body tries to make more scarring. Okay, so just to summarise, what can we do to minimise scarring? Orientate it in the right direction, minimal tension, and in the next video I'm going to talk about post-operatively, after you've had the scar, what you can do to uh, minimise scarring. So thank you very much for listening to this first of the series of uh, uh, videos on scarring. Um, uh, if you'd like any information about any of the procedures we do at Aurora or any aspects of scarring, uh, how, to, how to improve your scarring, please uh, contact us either by email or by um, phoning us on 01844, that's a UK number, 214.